If you are like me, you always have different sewing or stitching projects in progress. And oftentimes there are little projects you like to carry with you when you travel or going somewhere where you'll be sitting and having time to work on one of those projects. And if you're like me, you might have multiple going and need a way to carry them all around. So I thought it'd be fun to try out these June Taylor Quilt As You Go project bags. They are really cute and I have been wanting to try these zippers that are in this project. So let's walk through it. So here's the packaging for the bag and you can see that there is a set of two and the zippers are zippity do done. And keep an eye out for the project bags you choose and make sure you pick one with the zipper color that will work for the fabrics you want to use for it. So the zipper colors here are kind of a khaki color and then you'll see that it lets you know all of the extras that you need to work on this project. And you'll also see what the back looks like for the quilt as you go. All right, so let's open it up and get started. I have done many of the June Taylor Quilt As You Go projects before. I really love them. I love the printed batting, or in this case, we're going to be using a printed stabilizer. So I think it's so nice having it all printed and ready to go for you. So here is what that looks like. Hopefully you can see it on camera. It looks a little lighter there. We will end up with two different designs, which is kind of nice, I think, so that they won't both look exactly alike. So I'm gonna set this to the side. Here's what else we have. We have our clear vinyl so that you can see what project is in the bag. And I do like that they left the tissue paper with it. This really helps uh, you be able to sew along the vinyl if you don't have a Teflon foot. Here are all my instructions. And then here are those zippers. And I have never used them before. I've been wanting to try them. So I'm really excited for this project to be able to do that. Now I do want to point out, you see the little fold in the zippers. I am going to iron that so that I don't end up with the, that little bump once everything is completed. It's really hard to get out. So I'll iron that when I iron all my fabric. So since everything is out of the bag, I do want to show you this again, just so you can see what all comes in this kit, because I am going to post a link to it as well, just in case you want to work on the project. So you are going to make two different projects bags and they're two different sizes, a 16 inch and an 18 inch. So nice and big. Here is what the back will look like of each. The, so here's everything that is included. Two pieces of vinyl, the two zippity do done camel zippers, and the projects do come with different color zippers. So keep that in mind. And then patterns printed on the stabilizer. So here's what you'll need to add in. You'll need to add in two thirds yard each of four fabrics, lining fabric that is one yard, and then binding, which is a half of yard of what you'll need. You do get a quite a bit to get you started, but you do need to add in your own fabric for this kit. So here are the fabrics that I chose for my stash. I think it'll work well with the camel zippers, and I didn't want to add in buying a lot more when I grabbed this kit, so I really wanted to work with what I had. And so for prepping, I'm going to starch all my fabric and let it dry a little bit, as well as press the zipper. I'm gonna starch the fabric really well because I feel like that will really make sure that when I'm doing quilt as you go, I can finger press the fabrics down instead of getting up and going to my ironing area each time. Now, it isn't required to, to starch your fabric, so if you don't typically starch your fabric and you don't want to, that is fine. Uh, you could always just make sure you iron those seams really well after each stitch. All right, so I cut out all of the pattern pieces leaving some extra room around the outside of these blue lines and now what I'm doing is attaching the pattern pieces to the fabric I chose as my my lining fabric I chose this because I like the little flowers and this is going to show through the vinyl on the project bag so I wanted it to be a fabric that I really liked a lot from the set so I'm just going to pin 
this stabilizer down with the blue lines up to the wrong side of this lining fabric. Now, I could spray baste it into place if I wanted to or something like that, but I'm just going to go ahead and pin it just to make sure it attaches really well because I have not used this type of stabilizer before and I don't know if the spray base will attach really well to it, so I just want to make sure that it attaches really, really well. So I'm going to do the same thing with all of these stabilizer pieces, get it attached in place, and then I'm going to cut them out. Then I'll cut them out from the cut around them where the fabric is as well and follow the pattern instructions which says to stitch around the blue line. So it'll attach it all and also serve as a cutting guide for me later once I do all the quilt as you go. So I'm going to pin these all in place. I'm going to pin these smaller pieces as well which are um, kind of the front base of the bags. All right, so now that I have all of my stabilizer prepped, I'm ready to start bringing this all together. So the first thing I did was I cut out my center squares for both of my bags. So I'm gonna walk you through one first, and then we'll take a look at the other one as well, but they kind of built along the same principle, just a different design. So my first center square for this block, I decided to make the same fabric as my lining fabric. So it's a large square and it's going to go right in the center of this design and I'm going to pin it in place. So here is my center square and then here is where block one goes. So I'm gonna just line it up with the blue lines here and I'm just going to put a pin in to hold it. What I'll also need to do is cut my or my rectangles for block two and block three. So I'm gonna cut that from this like more khaki colored fabric here because I want to have some lighter contrasted fabric going into this next, um, next series since that one's so dark. So I'm gonna square up one side of my fabric and both of my next pieces are the exact same size, so that makes it so much easier. All right, so I have a strip of the fabric that I need cut, but I'm also going to use the same fabric for the next bag, and to cut those, I need to cut some squares and cut the squares into triangles. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut those as well, so I need to cut a larger strip for those because I want to do that in the same fabric, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut it now. And I'm not cutting all of my fabric at once for this project because I really want to make sure I'm cutting the fabric color that I want for each section. So I'm just going to go through this a little slower than I normally would. Usually I like to get all of my fabric cut all at once but I'm just gonna go a little slower with this and relax and take my time. I just think sometimes it's nice to just do some slow, easy sewing and not rush everything. So I just need two more rectangles cut here. And then maybe I might just always good to double check because I thought it was eight inches and it was not so sometimes when I'm thinking I have all the cuts remembered I don't really so sometimes it's good to double check all right so I'm gonna grab back this panel and so I'm going to lay the fabrics right side together across here Put a pin in and what we're going to be doing is sewing a scant quarter inch seam right along the edge here and then pressing it open. 
So we're going to do that by where we're going to fold over this rectangle to cover rectangle two, and this one will cover rectangle three. So since I already got the fabric cut for the other panel, let's just grab it and take a look. So the other panel here is going to be more of a square in a square look. So the other one's more of like a log, or not a log cabin, more of a courthouse steps, and this one is just a little bit of a different look to it. I'm gonna have a square in the position in the center for block one. And then these triangles I cut are going to be for two, three, four, and five. So they're gonna surround this to make that square and a square. And you see how it has the nice little nooks there to show us where the triangles line up, it's perfect. Look at that. That's really convenient to make sure you have everything lined up straight. So I'm just gonna pin these in place. And I think what I'm going to do is do two and three, press them open and then lay on four and five. So I'm gonna sew across here, press it open. Sew across here, press it open, and then I'll add on four and five in the same manner. Okay. So I'm just gonna keep building these out, following along with the numbers and referring to my pattern to cut each of them to the proper size. So I'll build these out just as the pattern says, and I'll bring you along showing you all those steps. All right, so just a tip, you really do not want to iron this um, stabilizer. It does not hold up well to high heat, so it's best if you finger press these seams or use very light heat on the iron. So I have my pieces cut for, um, for blocks seven, six, and seven. So I'm gonna lay them right sides together and put some pins in for sewing a quarter inch seam across. And I also wanna point out that as you work through here, make sure that you're removing your pins. So each time I flip these up, make sure there's no pins under them and feel along to make sure you haven't missed any pins either because after you sew all these down, you're not gonna be able to get them out if you use pins. So just be careful on that. All right, so I have that one ready. And then for this one, I grabbed the same fabric for four and five. All right, so same thing, I'm gonna sew a quarter inch seam and press them open. And like I said, really try to prep, finger press it um, or use really low heat. So for the small 16 inch bag, I'm gonna be cutting some more strips to keep working through that courthouse steps. So I think the hardest part of this whole project right now is going to be bringing this all together because so far building up the Quilt As You Go panel is I think fairly straightforward for both of them. All of the cutting is laid out very nicely. It makes it pretty easy to work through. So I'm gonna set this strip over and grab a bigger square ruler because I need to cut some big squares for the next one. So for my larger square in a square, I need two 10 inch squares. So need to line that up there so I can cut 
along here to cut out those squares. then we need to cut these along the diagonal. Alright, so those are ready. And then we just need to cut these strips down. Alright, so then we're just going to lay these in place again. And so a quarter inch seam across here. All right, so I'm gonna press these open and then add on the triangles. Just like before, I'm gonna do two at a time and then press them and then add the next on. So right sides together at 10 and 11. I'm serious, I really love how they have the lines to help make sure you're lining the triangles up straight. I think that is so smart and makes it a lot easier to make sure you're you're going to have this lined up all centered. I really my only complaint about this kit is that I really wish that they used a stabilizer that you could iron um, on high heat because I think that would make it a lot easier to get this lined up really nice and pressed out really nice without it warping. Uh, most of the June Taylor kits that I have done um, weren't like this where you couldn't um, iron right on the stabilizer. So this is the first one that I've done that you couldn't. And it does say it in the instructions um, to use low heat. So just keep that in mind for this one. All right, so I'm gonna pull out some of this fabric to see if I have any that are long enough to cut the last strips here because I would really like to do some dark fabric again. Um, I think I need two and a half inches and I don't want to use the same one. So I think these two pieces will be long enough for my scrap. So I'm just going to press them and then cut them to size to go here. And after I sew these on and the triangles, our panels will be finished unless I want to do any quilting on them. Uh, so after that, it's going to be assembling the bag. So I really think these are coming along very quickly. I really love quilt as you go projects. You can finish something up quick. So if you've been working on a lot of bigger projects, it's kind of fun to mix something like this in. All right, so I have my two panels finished. And I think now what I'm going to do, instead of pinning these ends in place for trimming these up, I think what I'm going to do is actually do an eighth of an inch base stitch around it and then I'm going to cut out around the outer line here per the pattern. The pattern suggests pinning these loose pieces in place and doing that, but I think it'll be easier for me if I just go ahead and baste it an eighth of an inch away from the edge and then cut it out. That way I don't have to worry about it flipping around any. I'll have to tell you, I do love the look of this panel a little more than this one. I do wish this one, I wish the inner square was a little bit smaller so this could be built out more. But I think they are both going to look pretty cute. Now you can add some quilting to your panels. I'm going to choose not to this time around, but you will definitely want to add some quilting to the headers on this project. So that is these kind of rectangle panels that you have. You had one for the small, um, project bag as well as the large. So I already have it backed with the lining fabric that I'm using. And then now you'll just cut some rectangles that fit on here and then you'll want to quilt the layers together. 
So I'm just gonna remove the pins that I had in when I was doing the first step and pin this on for some quilting. Then just as before, we'll trim these up to size as well and start bringing the bag together. I do still need to cut my vinyl pieces down to size. I've been laying them flat to let the creases kind of come out gradually. They're honestly still not coming out, so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with those, but I do need to cut them down to size and I do need to use them. <laughs> so my bags might just have a little bit of crease in them until it kind of works its way all the way out. So I think I'm just gonna do some basic quilting on these, um, probably just some straight lines, just keep it simple. All right, for this step, you're going to need your longer zipper, your longer heading, and your piece of vinyl that you cut down. So what we're going to do is grab some of the tissue paper that was left in with the vinyl. This will help you a lot with feeding this through your sewing machine. So I'm gonna use some clips and pin one side of the zipper onto the vinyl. Now you don't wanna use pins because that will pierce the vinyl. So I'm gonna feed one side of the zipper into the vinyl. And there's gonna be a little bit of overhang and that's fine. I'm just gonna use some clips to hold it in place a little bit. And then I'm going to just use my zipper foot and stitch along the zipper right along the edge. Now, like I said, I'm gonna bring this tissue paper over because I'm gonna keep it under the vinyl so the vinyl doesn't stick to the table on my sewing machine. All right, so I have this one side sewn onto the zipper. And in hindsight, I probably should have used the same color of thread they used up here to prep this zipper, but I wasn't honestly paying attention. Uh, and that's fine. I think it'll still work out okay. Now I'm going to keep the tissue paper here, but I'm going to slide this side of my header in and I want to make sure that I am lined up with the vinyl so that when I trim this down, it will all work out nicely. All right, so now I'm going to line these two pieces up together. So I'm gonna line up to make sure that at least two sides kind of match. And then I'm going to trim these up to square them up together. So the front of this with the vinyl is a little bit bigger than the rest of this panel. You probably can't see, but there's some overhang here of the vinyl and also of the zipper, which you probably can see. So I want to square this up so it is all even. This side, we're just gonna be trimming off some vinyl. And this side will be trimming off some zipper and not much else. It's mainly just zipper over here. A little bit of vinyl. All right, so this will be the back of this bag and this is what the front will look like. So I'm gonna add some more clips along here. The trickiest part to stitch is going to be around here, but we're right on the vinyl. So I'm gonna show you what I'm going to do to make that work. Now I'm gonna baste all of these layers in place to get it all ready for binding. I have my binding strips prepped part of the way, but I do need to press the seams open and then press it in half to go around here. Um, 
So after basting this in place, it'll just be adding on the binding and finishing it up. And then I have the other one to work on. But I think this one's going to be so cute. It's so big. This is the 18 inch size. So I'm going to baste. And what I'm going to do is cut some of this tissue paper into strips to hold along the side. Um, that way I can just rip it off, but it'll help my presser foot not get stuck to the vinyl as I work around. So I'm going to cut three strips, one for each side, and I still have another tissue paper to work on the other bag. I probably shouldn't be using these scissors on this. Oh, it's okay. Alright, so with the smaller bag, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add the vinyl in, stitch across, and then add the heading on and stitch across, and then square it up with the back of the bag, just as before. I'll also base stitch it in place to get it ready for the binding. Alright, so now that I have it all Baste it in place. The only thing I have left for both of them is putting the binding on. It's definitely a lot of lot easier with these zippers with you just tucking them inside and stitching across. It's pretty easy. Um, the only thing I would say that you need to think about is because of the way this zipper was constructed, I did put one of them on a different way than I normally put zippers. So let me show you what I mean. All right, so. I like for my zippers to close to the left and then open to the right. Um, but you can see on this one, I accidentally put it on the other way. So not that big of a deal, honestly, but just something to keep in mind because of how the zipper is. It was closed on both sides in the center and I really didn't think about it too much because I just didn't. And that just happens sometimes. It's not that big of a deal though, honestly. Just something to keep in mind if you're constructing one of these. Another thing that I already showed was that because the zipper's kind of already brought together, um, I ended up using two different threads. So as you can see, I used a gray thread along the outside and the zipper was construct constructed with a matching thread on the inside. It would probably be a little hard to get the exact matching thread for this unless you bought the, the kit and then brought it in and color matched the thread. So just make sure you're okay with it. I'm fine with it. The, the thread they use blends in so well, I don't think it matters so much that there's a different one, but if you need it to really, really match, keep that in mind. Something else I didn't think about that you should really think about is that I haven't done quilt as you go in a long time, so I sewed over a lot on the lining and I didn't think to snip the threads beforehand. These are gonna be mine and I don't honestly mind. There's gonna be a bunch of stuff in these and I'm gonna be using them for projects to hold it all together. So I don't, it's it's not gonna bother me, but just keep it in mind for your, yourself to make sure that you really, really like how it's coming together. All right, so now all I have to do is add the binding on. I am going to sew my binding strips to the back of the bag. I'm going to leave a tail and keep raw edges together. And I'm going to sew all the way around 
and then when I come back to the other side I'm going to join the binding strips together flip it to the front and top, top stitch it in place I'm going to do that with both of them and these projects bags will be done just like that pretty pretty quick to come together on these Alright, so I sewed the binding onto the back and then I flipped it over to the front. So now I'm just going to top stitch around the border. And I'm going to do that with my zipper foot. That'll make it a lot easier. I won't have to worry about the vinyl sticking to my presser foot or anything like that. So after top stitching around, I'll have the first bag completely finished. And then on the other one, I will just have to sew the binding to the back, flip it around to the front, and do the same thing. This is definitely a day project. I'm going to have both of these finished in just a few hours. Definitely a lot of fun. There's a few things that I need to look out for if I make these again, but otherwise a very fun project. just like that my project bags are finished I really think they turned out so cute I'm really happy with them let me know if you are planning on making some and if you do share them in my Facebook group with everyone I'd love to see what fabrics you chose and how you're turned out and also in the comments below if you've made these or have made them let us know what tips and tricks you have for bringing them together nicely, what tips you have about working with vinyl and other things like that. I would love to hear from you. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.